Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the data sovereignty panel discussion, um, part of a series that we have started earlier this year to shed light on what technologies should be adopted for a safer and smarter city. So let me quickly uh, 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 explain digital sovereignty in terms of uh, in terms of some of the, the challenges. So I mentioned the need to to develop uh, in-house um, uh, technology for highly sensitive mission critical systems, and in this I will single out enterprise security and nationwide cybersecurity. Uh, intelligence as two examples in which we have attempted to uh, uh, build internal capacity in, in Qatar Computing Research Institute, the organization that I'm a part of. We work closely with the with the Ministry of Interior and other entities to uh, develop the stance in enterprise security and in doing uh, security intelligence that is using artificial intelligence using data analytics uh, to analyze uh, uh, large amounts of data. Countries are not sharing data uh, for various reasons, uh, lack of trust or, and, and, and so on. Similarly, like if you have an attack against the bank, banks are not sharing information about the attacks and the nature of the attacks that, that are existing because you know, they're worried about financial costs uh, and, and, and implications, and uh, uh, while the criminals, the attackers, uh, share information very easily and very widely uh, in cyberspace and in dark, uh, in, on, on the dark web. Then, of course, we've got the issues around the Cloud Act, which I kind of think spooked a lot of, uh, uh, of European governments, this idea of extraterritoriality in terms of the ability of the US government to ask for data, uh, from overseas uh, companies. Um, now that's more complicated and it's not as bad as it uh, first appears, but it was certainly a trigger that I think uh, caused a lot of this kind of uh, political out outburst from, uh, from European leaders. Then of course, we've got the DSA and the DMA, the Digital Services Act, is, is one that tries to overview the, the kind of, you know, the rules of engagement for technology companies in the European market. So they're uh, identifying issues around illegal content, goods and services, making those digital platforms uh, uh, more, more, have them more um, have greater responsibility for the information that they're carrying, uh, dissemination of false information and freedom of expression, uh, users' rights, to uh, choose access to information, transparent algorithms and depersonalized recommendations. Still going through parliament, this will be a long time before it comes to fruition, but certainly the intent is there. And then well, the Digital Market Act is really about trying to uh, embrace a more competitive Europe, looking at the trade barriers and, and natural barriers that exist across you know, things like e-commerce and also looking at competition issues. And then I think, you know, very interestingly, is this idea of Gaia X. It's this idea that Europe builds its own uh, federated uh, cloud uh, infrastructure. It appears uh, that the EU is a kind of this united front, but actually one of the major key findings of the WIC report is to suggest actually that's not really true. Uh, it's mostly the, uh, it's mostly France and Germany uh, countries like Denmark and Estonia that are really kind of embracing this idea of, of a broad digital sovereignty um, uh, uh, actions. The biggest learning uh, that uh, we have from this past period is actually that no business is really immune to a crisis and no organization is 100% resilient. Digital businesses or businesses who have some digital uh, capabilities have been able to pivot more rapidly and respond to their customers' needs. So we see that technologies, especially in the last 10 months, have been very, uh, very, very important um, in our daily lives, supporting business continuity, uh, remote work, remote court hearings, uh, education, 
um, and uh, and a lot of uh, solutions in relation to um, you know the quarantines and uh, and meeting the increasing uh, COVID nineteen patient demands in many hospitals. We have also some uh, some stories uh, from Qatar, including you know vaccine management. Um, students remote education, um, you know, for for over 200,000 students and uh, remote work uh, for government um, employees. Some countries uh, consider that data localization offers a quick way to have high tech economic activity uh, in, in their within their borders, or sometimes they believe that data is more private and secure. Um, within, again, the country borders. However, in most instances, such mandates don't by themselves selves increase uh, privacy or data security. Finally, I will say, uh, you know, transparency, 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 that's the most important. Uh, I think we need to continue the dialogue with um, suppliers, with users, uh, and policymakers uh, on that topic. Thank you. Mr. Andrew have said that there's nothing much in technologies within Europe, but surprisingly within the region of Arab, if you notice, we are look alike. We don't have much of producing technology rather than using and abusing uh, and consuming uh, technologies. Now, I said single-sided regulations, which is only done by a specific region or country, for example, like GDPR or Asia or APNIC or USA or Canadian, these are will not serve the purpose of data protections for entire uh, people in the globe because the moment you are moving from one country to another your data in that country may not be uh, uh, under that specific law that you come from and therefore your data will be used in, in different ways without even you know about uh, so single-sided regulation has never been a solution so we need to look at how we can put all the regulatory together how we can look at to a global regulatory approach of global framework uh, in terms of data protection, which is, I think, very important is how to get everybody in one table and make them think in one word and how we, we can uh, do such a things that can uh, uh, bring the real protection. It's not only a policy and regulations or document that is being set somewhere uh, and maybe nobody even read it. Every country in the world today have speed cameras. But how many people adhere the speed cameras? You will always notice that the people just drive past with their drive cars because the car allowed them to go that speed, that high. They pause and brake by just by the cameras, and then they speed again after the camera when they are not into the uh, coverage of the speed camera, causing either the accident before and after. So rules uh, and controls uh, are not really effective uh, in terms of how uh, data uh, need to be uh, protected, more or less. We need to uh, look at uh, a different way of uh, uh, doing uh, uh, protecting data. We need to make awareness. We need to make sound regulations. We need to uh, look at uh, various uh, things that how we can uh, protect the data through consumer awareness or through how the people will be self-aware of their uh, data. How Bitcoin platform can secure a multi-million transaction every day? The answer is blockchain. What is blockchain? Uh, the blockchain um, is a new technology that secure, um, secure more the transaction uh, of money and um, any other type of information. The main problem in the last 10 years um, of data sovereignty is that um, um, the data of country one was hosted in country two. Uh, uh, in country two and should obey the governance and the law, uh, uh, the government structure of the, uh, and the law of the hosted country. Uh, but also in, in cloud architecture or in the last 10 years, the data are always centralized. Uh, we know the location of server, we have full access of this data. But uh, with the blockchain, with the blockchain, I think it's quite different because the data is decentralized. We have many copies of the same data in many, in many places in the world. We don't have full control, uh, uh, full control data, so which is create a lot of challenge and opportunity from many perspectives, um, from individual, community, cooperative, and also technological uh, data sovereignty. If I if I may now move to the questions, I think uh, security should follow where the application and technology are going. So there's a lot of emphasis these days on IOTs. So therefore, that 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 uh, sort of uh, uh, increases 
the uh, the uh, the target for uh, cybersecurity attacks. So that definitely should be cloud is uh, very important in cybersecurity and uh, data in general, uh, data, whether it's uh, privacy, security, and, and, and so on. So I think let's go back to those that framework about security, about privacy, and about strategy. And what I think, you know, government certainly and business communities around the world and different countries should think about is this idea, we must do a much better job of standardizing global agreements on cybersecurity certification and checks on vendor hardware and software. If we could agree to those standards, I think the, the market would become that much more competitive in terms of different companies being able to hit very clear standards in, in terms of security. I think um, Abdullah said it well, like developing global approaches will be key. And... Um, of course, the organizations, I think, as uh, they understand their data and what they want to do with it, well, they should have the flexibility in defining the levels of their uh, data, the sensitivity, the risk to the data. Um, but this is, not, this is not all, actually. The policymakers have a role to play in this. Uh, they can introduce data classification schemes and guidance. And while doing that, actually, um, you know, data classification is not something that should be viewed uh, in a vacuum, in isolation, um, as merely a security-related exercise. Some people may unconsciously do things. You know, I, I've seen things like it says highly confidential data transferred uh, to uh, one person to another. Uh, and it says, please make your manager sign in this, but it's confidential, but it's already in WhatsApp. You know, it's already been sent over WhatsApp, so there's no confidential anymore in there. So this is this is where, where we are today. Uh, again, this come up to the same point where uh, it's rather than saying uh, uh, the data itself, we need to talk about how to educate individuals uh, and how to make sure that individually are well and self-aware of this uh, technology. The doctor said uh, previously that even we can't find any information on Qatar listed anywhere, with the, although we have the best universities uh, in the countries. Today, even our universities in Qatar, not very active in putting the information for people and making this kind of awareness. Dr. Ratib, uh, would you like to give us a one minute closing from your, from your end after all of this? <laughs> yes, um, I want to, I want to just um, say that um, uh, this problem, it's become a raising day after day because maybe there is a big gap between the, the evolution of technology day after day. We have new technology, new concept, new methodology, and, um, and the rhythm of the lawmaker, which may be, at, uh, may be making a law or a policy take more time comparing to the evolution of the, um, of the, of the technology. I'm just honored by all of this. This has been one of my most interesting uh, panels, the experts and the subject is hot and it's not one-sided, you know, we've seen many sides of this, but I, I also represent the, the private sector. I think the private sector is looking at this as also, uh, there, is, there is a big opportunity for localizing uh, skills, for localizing products, for working closely around all of those. And I think all of the private sector out there is, is looking forward uh, to build the future with you guys. And I hope to uh, see more and more of them in the future. And especially the entrepreneurs. <laughs> and usually I wish all of the hackers out there a very boring night. And uh, inshallah you enjoy the sports day tomorrow. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>